So I decided to make this video to sort of explain how do you actually meditate because uh, a lot of people have asked me about it and I've also gotten a lot of very specific questions from people who have uh, certain pains, back problems. Uh, one guy even told me he has this ringing in his ears, I think it's called tinnitus. And people ask me like, okay, so how do you deal with that and how do you actually meditate? So regarding meditation, it's not really about um, being, you know, this super successful, present to the moment, flower being. Uh, it's more about um, training your mind to focus on specific things that you want to focus on. Uh, that that's what actually gives you that power. Now, wh while you do that, you actually have the added benefit of your brain sort of realizing that a lot of things you thought are very real and, and, and actual are not really real. Like you might be meditating and you'll feel a certain back pain and your body will say, okay, you have to move, you have to shift position. And then because you decided to stay still and keep meditating, that pain will naturally go away after a while. So you'll be left in a really weird state. You'll be like, wait, was this pain actually real? Because it, it just disappeared. Um, another thing is that um, you might have sudden thoughts like, oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to get up. I need to check this. Again, if you resist, I won't call it resist. If you keep focusing away from it, keep focusing back on the breath, then it will naturally pass. So anybody who has heart problems, back problems, you know, hear ear problems, you know, anything like that, that's not something that should stop you from meditating. That should actually be the, the specific reason why you should meditate more than anybody else. So, um, sorry, I'm a bit, uh, having a bit of a cold. Uh, I've not been sleeping very well lately. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, so when you meditate, what you want to do is you want to keep bringing back the focus to the breath and how it actually feels when the breath comes in and out. So a lot of people, they do that with uh, the nose, you know, just, just like that. Obviously I'm a bit running in the nose so it doesn't sound perfectly clear but they just focus on the way their nose uh, feels when they breathe for me I find that's not stimulating enough I find there is not at least at the beginning there's not enough um, sort of a feeling in that area for me to actually refocus myself back to the the way it feels on the nose but I find that when I breathe through the mouth when I go Like that it's very easy for me to actually feel the way the air feels when I breathe in and breathe out so what I do is I keep um, breathing like that I just go and I just feel that feeling in the mouth that cold feeling when the air comes in and out and I keep my focus on it. So every time I feel something, let's say a slight pain in my back, I'll, I'll feel the pain and that would obviously, me feeling the pain, I know that means I'm not focused on the breath because if I'm completely focused on the breath, I won't feel the pain. So whenever I feel anything but the breath, I'm like, okay, I lost focus again. And then I go, and then the focus go back, goes back to the breath. Same if I have a, a troubling thought, like, oh, I need to do this. Oh, what about that? Oh, no. Again. And I also have this rule where I try to move as little as possible. Uh, basically, almost perfectly still. Um, it's actually when you kind of stay still that you start getting pains in your back. Um, if you're really, you know, really standing up, st sitting straight. So that's, I think that's really where the value comes. You know, when you kind of readjust yourself to make yourself comfortable, you lose a lot of the value uh, because the whole thing is that you have all these distractions and you're still able to, again, 
bring it back to the breath. So next time you're meditating, don't try to ignore the hard stuff and don't try to do it in spite of the hard stuff. Try to use the hard stuff as leverage. It's like, okay, this is a big challenge. So if I can get over this, the reward would be bigger. It's just like in the gym where most of the actual results you get from weightlifting is in the painful last one or two rep. Uh, you know, if you just go to like seven or eight reps and you don't feel, you know, it's, it's not really hard for you, you're not really gaining the maximum benefits. Whereas if you actually do the extra, extra rep, that's like the hardest one, uh, at least the way it feels for me is that this one is like pretty much more important than all the rest of the set, you know, the reps combined. So don't ignore the hard stuff. Don't do it in spite of it. Use it again. So you sit and meditate. And suddenly you get this feeling in your back, like your back hurts again. Okay, my back hurts. I'm bringing back to the breath. And you start thinking troubling thoughts. Okay, I'm, tri I'm thinking troubling thoughts. I'm not on the breath. Go back to the breath. And the only thing you're exercising is your ability to keep refocusing yourself on something that you chose to focus yourself. Now, eventually, if I'm still and not if I'm like into it enough I could transition to the to the nose breathing uh, and because I'll be able to pick up on the most subtle feeling of the nose now this is obviously more long-term beneficial because you'll be breathing through your nose most of the time um, you know outside of meditation so the the effect would be you kind of anchor that meditative state to the feeling you get when you breathe through, through your nose. But again, I like to transition from the mouth to the nose because if I just start with the nose breathing, I, I don't have anything to grasp. I don't feel like I have enough sensation yet in the nose to focus on it. So I, I need to be more present, a bit more focused before I can actually pick up the subtle feeling from breathing through your nose. So again, I use it as a transition. So just to summarize, Again, meditation is about refocusing yourself. It's about uh, developing your ability to con consciously focus on what you want to focus on for a sustained period of time. That's where all the benefits come from. And the less variables you add into the mixture, meaning the less you move, the less you, you give excuses to change your position and stuff, the more benefits you're going to get. Now, the, again, the only thing you need to do is keep focusing back on the breath. Trust yourself that you're going to find ways to fuck it up for yourself. You're going to find ways to, your body will feel uncomfortable. You'll think of, you know, unnecessary thoughts. Something is going to happen. Like just keep focusing on the breath through the nose or the, or the mouth and um, trust that things are going to come up that are going to try to take away your attention. Um, again, pains, worry, stress, and you just keep going back to the breath until you kind of reach this really good point. For me, it happens either in the first 20 minutes or if I do a really long session, like one hour, then usually towards the 30, 40 minutes uh, mark, I'll feel perfectly still. And then I'll have the ability to sort of completely control my attention because your brain kind of gives up. It realizes that you're going to focus no matter what. So again, it's highly recommended. Meditation is pretty much one of the top three habits you can ever have. And the rewards are immediate especially if you do long meditation sessions, really long and hardcore ones. But, but beyond that, the long-term benefits are really where you're going to be happy about it. Again, food tastes better, uh, music is better, sex is better, you're able to focus better, um, you're, you're more conscious of the way you react to things, you're able to choose your reactions more, um, you just feel more connected to this life because you know everything you go through it becomes a memory so even the best things you went through in this life are just going to be memories and you know memories are not very dependable not very exciting uh, what's exciting is what's in front of you so honing that ability to be there with whatever happens that's where you're going to get the most benefit in life because again life is about making memories but it's also about being there uh, through the boring stuff because um, as much as even I, you know, as a guy with bipolar who's traveled the world, did the craziest shit, invested 
tons of money and, and crazy projects. Even somebody like me, you know, not every day is exciting. You know, you have a lot of, most of the time, 80% of the time, it's, it's boring. You know, you just do the routine. You work out, you, you read, you meditate, you think about your goals, you know, you take a bit of action. That's your life, you know, and the peaks, you know, the really cool experiences or cool situations, these are f passing and you're going to forget them. You know, the best girl you've ever had sex with, the most money you've ever made, the best living situation you've ever had, the best tra place you traveled. These are all going to be like fading memories very quickly. But your ability to actually enjoy what's in front of you, that's something you're going to carry for all your life. So thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, I'd love to help you. Um, and again, if you haven't started, haven't tried meditating yet, you don't know what you're missing. Like even one minute a day, just, just start with anything. You know, just, just stop the video, go sit down, focus on your breath for just a minute. I, I promise you, you might even see that you've never done this this might even be the first time in your entire life that you actually took a break and had a chance to think. So um, thanks for watching again. Keep up the good work.